Welcome back to Afternoon Live. Energy healing treatments like Reiki and acupuncture work for so many people, but could the effects be just imaginary? Here to tell us about the latest research, we welcome University of Oregon neuroscience professor and the author of Infinite Awareness, Dr. Marjorie Woolicott. Dr. Woolicott, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to have you. First, I want to congratulate you. This is just in, and I wanted to write it down to make sure I got it right. Your book got first place in the Great Northwest book festival this year in the category of spiritual books as well as first prize in the mind body spirit book awards in its category exactly that just came out congratulations thank you thank you well, that's awesome <laughs> yes okay well let's talk about energy healing the first question i have is what is it exactly <laughs> so first of all there are a lot of varieties of energy healing that you hear about mm -hmm. and they all typically involve some aspect of therapeutic touch okay and one of the more popular ones in the united states is reiki which which originated in Japan mm -hmm. and there are many many studies now on the efficacy of Reiki and other types of energy healing mm -hmm. and what I should say is that the people who actually talk about it and practice it believe that there is an energy which they might call the universal life force that actually flows through the practitioner and into the person that is actually being worked upon mm -hmm. and they believe that it's that energy that is actually healing them or perhaps harmonizing the energy in their own body okay at the risk of sounding silly yes when I hear you I think about the force like uh -huh. in Star Wars <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean and it, it sounds like very similar like there's some sort of energy field or force that we can harness mm -hmm. that can help us feel better right and I think that would be one way of looking at it if you were trying to explain it to someone else and I should say that there are people who are skeptical certainly about energy healing and mm -hmm. they include my pre-med majors at the University of Oregon and me long before I began to actually do research and look at research yeah because I was gonna ask you I mean yeah. you you study neuroscience exactly <laughs> so energy healing I'm trying to figure out what interested you about this why did you start studying well and I should say that first of all being trained as a neuroscientist I was a material materialist that didn't believe in any sort of energy healing or anything like that. Right. And then I had an experience in meditation when I was a young professor where I felt energy and I said, well, what really is this? Mm -hmm. And I began to be interested in doing research in my laboratory on energy healing and meditation to try to put together those two halves of my life. You know, the neuroscientist that's a materialist and the person that's having these experiences of energy. Yeah. And doing that, I began to find out in my own research mm -hmm. on meditation and then in other people's research research on things like Reiki and energy healing that there's a lot of evidence that this literally works. Now the key is that we don't necessarily, we can't measure this in the laboratory is how I should put it. We can't measure that energy and yet because we know people get better mm -hmm. compared to placebo um, groups which um, are ones where people think they're getting it but they're not, we have to say that there must be something there. Well what does it feel like? Well um, for me it actually feels like I have this calming energy moving through me when I actually have a Reiki session. Hmm. I should say that in one study they actually asked the people who were receiving Reiki to tell a little bit about how it felt and mm -hmm. one woman said it's literally like I can feel the energy moving into me. Another one said it's like we're actually able to perceive energy but in our culture we're so used to focusing on the mind and the intellect right. that we are totally um, unaware of this energy that's actually there that we could perceive and so through Reiki you're beginning to get uh, more sensitivity to this energy that actually is flowing through you. Huh. And then one last person that I thought was really interesting in what she said, she said she believes that the stresses of our lives, the anger and the upsetting emotional events actually store energy that can be negative. They cause blocking of our energy in our body and that this Reiki healing seems to move that energy through us so that we then become, become more harmonized again. So where does it come out of? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm always imagining what goes in and I don't know why I think about my mouth maybe you know with meditation you breathe so do you breathe it in, like you know kind of breathe it in and then release it as your breath goes out well, maybe? Interestingly the, the practitioner simply um, focuses on energy moving through them through their hands into the person 
and this being worked on. And they literally oh. can begin to feel this energy moving through their hands. And then the person actually feels that as well um, when they are really sensitive as, as they're being worked on. And how often should you do this? <laughs> well, in a lot of these studies, they were giving Reiki, for example, once a week for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And in another study, they were giving people Reiki every day. And maybe I can tell you about one study from Yale University Medical Center. Yes, please. So Yale University is like one of the top university medical centers in the country. Right. And in their cardiac care unit, a team of people, um, Rachel Friedman was the head of the team, actually took people that had just had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And in that acute phase, they gave them Reiki every day for a period of days and compared that to a control group that didn't have any Reiki at all. And they found that the people that had Reiki were significantly more improved in their heart rate function, this heart rate variability compared mm -hmm. to the control group. Mm -hmm. And they said the effects were actually the same as a pharmaceutical drug, propanolol, which is what's typically used for cardiac patients. So here you don't have the side effects of propanolol, right. but you actually have all of the benefits. What? So isn't that amazing that yes. that's what Reiki can actually do? And that is a major medical center. And so now you can say that there is some sort of scientific evidence. Exactly. Instead of people saying this is some hokey pokey business exactly. and nonsense. Yes. And Yale isn't the only place that's doing research. I think if you look at all the major university medical centers like Stanford, Harvard, etc., you'll find that people are now beginning to actually use this in the hospitals and then do research on it. And there's many, many studies now that show that it really is very effective. So should you use energy healing as a substitute or an enhancement on your healing process for whatever it is that you're going through. And I think that's up to every individual person. I would typically do both my Western medicine as a neuroscientist, I really right. trust in that, and the energy healing as well, because I think that the two in combination would be the best for me. Wow, I am fascinated. I think that's awesome. Might have to try some Reiki. Hey. Okay, well, thank you so much, Dr. Willikati. The book again is Infinite Awareness, and we're gonna have more information about it and her on our website at katu.com.